Hi guys, welcome to my affordable watch collection. My name is Aviv and I'm so happy that Art Deco is back in style. I have always admired those 1920s aesthetics and lately a few micro brands have been releasing Art Deco inspired watches. They're usually classy dress watches, but that's not the case of the Horizon Nautilus we're going to take a look at today. This one is a proper 300 meters water resistant dive watch. There are so many unique and custom made features on this watch, so many cool details that believe me, you will not want to miss a thing. In fact, we are going to count all those cool custom made or unique little details as we go along, something I've never done on the channel before. Do note that this is a prototype watch that was kindly lent to the channel for review from Horizon Watches. It is going live on Kickstarter on the 1st of October and there will be some changes done to the watch before it hits final production. I will point those out for you when necessary. Also, I will be sending the Nautilus back to the company once I'm done with it. Horizon Watches was born out of one man's dream to design his own watch. Ukraine-based Fred, the founder of the brand, has been working with many different micro brands during the last 10 years on the design side of things. Now he decided it was finally time to make his dream materialize with the launch of this unique timepiece. This watch doesn't only draw inspiration from the Art Deco movement, but also from Jules Verne's famous 1870 novel 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. We're going to see cues from both the novel and the Art Deco styling all throughout this review. The Nautilus will be available in four different colorways. Two of them come with a CUS N8 bronze case, which will cost 379 US dollars during the campaign and two in stainless steel, which will set you back 349 bucks. All are equally appealing in my opinion. The one we are taking a look at today is one of the steel ones, and it is called the Salmon Sand Nautilus. I don't have any packaging to show you guys today, but here are the measurements. The width of the case is 42 millimeters. Its thickness is 14 and a half according to my measurement. The distance between the lugs is 22 mm, lug tip to lug tip is 46.9 mm, and the watch weighs 116 grams. The Nautilus is water resistant to a depth of 300 meters or 30 atmospheres. The color of the dial is what I can best describe as a deep, dark salmon color. It has two layers. A brushed chapter ring where the minute track and the indices reside and the gravel textured middle part. Going from the outside in, we have a beautifully designed minute track printed in black around the outer edge of the dial. It is stylized in an intricate and interesting art deco style. After that we have a custom set of highly polished and loom filled indices, again heavily art deco inspired. A diamond shape marks the 12 o'clock position, very artistic 3, 6 and 9, and circles everywhere else with the date complication window beautifully integrated into the 4 o'clock indice. The date wheel is white and the numbers are printed on it in black ink. On the center of the dial we find the brand's name under the 12 o'clock diamond, raised over the gravel texture and painted black and Nautilus 3080M 300 meters is implemented in the same manner on the 6 o'clock position. This to my understanding is going to be changed and instead of Nautilus it will just have a capital N. The hands too are custom made. The hour and minute hands are both highly polished and faceted and have diamond shaped tips that are filled with loom. The second hand is completely loomed and has a double diamond shaped eye of the needle tip on the counterbalance. The loom on the indices, the hands and the bezel insert on this prototype 
looks like a green C3 Superluminova to me, but the mail I got from Horizon says it's BGW9 Superluminova, so I imagine they meant that the final product will have that icy blue BGW9. So I'm not going to talk about the strength and longevity of the loom here, just the profile of the loom, and you have to agree that this looks very impressive. I've mentioned the perfect integration of the date complication, and look at that, the date wheel is even loomed. It blends perfectly even when the lights are off. The unique shapes of the indices look great when loomed, and will allow you to easily distinguish between them. The only weak point I see here is the tip of the minute hand, which is a bit on the small side, making it hard to spot. Covering the dial is a flat piece of scratch-resistant sapphire crystal, slightly protruding over the bezel. I'm not sure how many layers of anti-reflective coating are applied to the crystal, but it definitely helps toning down the glare. The case is made of 316L stainless steel, and is actually made up of two individual pieces that are connected together to give more depth to the different finishes. The tops of the lugs have two different levels, if you will. The top ones are brushed, and the bottom polished, and the sides of the case are brushed. The lugs angle down nicely all the way below the case back, which will make the watch conform better to your wrist. Another cool detail is engraved between the lugs at the 12 o'clock position. A set of coordinates pointing at the location where the fictional frigate Abraham Lincoln first encounters Captain Nemo's Nautilus in Jules Verne's novel. A very cool touch in my opinion. Those will be extended on the final production units to include the coordinates minutes, two more digits after each of the numbers. Between the lugs at the 6 o'clock, you'll find the watch's serial number. In this case, it's zero, since this is a prototype. At the 3 o'clock position, protected halfway by short angular crown guards, you'll find an oversized screw-down crown. It has an indent on its center and gnarling for good grip. Screw it out and twist up to hand-wind the movement. Pull it out to the first position and twist up again to change the date. And when you pull it all the way out, the second hand stops and you can set the time. The bezel too is made of stainless steel and features a coin edge lip that both provides good grip and accents the vintage look of the watch very well. The bezel insert is made of high domed stainless steel with those loomed markers a downwards facing triangle marking the 12 o'clock position, batons on the 3, 6 and 9, and dots everywhere else. There's a small gap between the insert and the case, but that will be fixed when the watch hits production stage. This is a 120 click unidirectional bezel that feels smooth yet tactile when you turn it. There is no unwanted backplay or freedom. There's a severe misalignment issue here between the bezel and the dial, especially when you look at the baton at the 6 o'clock. But Horizon did assure me that this issue is going to be addressed and fixed. The case back is another area where Horizon put an extra effort and attention to details. It has a 3D custom-made design depicting an underwater scene with an old-time diver surrounded with some seaweed and scary deep-sea creatures reaching for Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, the novel that inspired this watch. The cool artwork is covered with another flat sapphire crystal, yet another small detail that adds to the overall appeal of the Nautilus. Around the design we find some engraved information and even some more cool details. Horizon on top, 30 ATM, 300 meters, with a little diver's helmet, referring of course to the water resistance. Sapphire crystal, the acronyms for Ukraine and Singapore, which were the countries that the two founders of the Horizon brand were from, but since they did split up and it's just a one-man show now, this will be changed to just N to represent the Nautilus name. 
automatic caliber and stainless steel are also engraved here. The Nautilus is powered by the almighty trialed and tested Seiko Instruments NH35, the go-to choice for micro brands looking for an affordable and reliable automatic movement. It has 24 joules and it beats at 21,600 beats per hour, it hacks and it hand winds, and should provide you with 41 hours of power reserve. The stated accuracy of these is between minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day, but in reality you will get much better accuracy out of your NH35 movement. The watch comes on a custom designed black vulcanized rubber strap. It is striped on the top side and has the brand's name and the wave pattern on the back. It features quick release spring bars for easy strap change and yes, a custom designed Art Deco style stainless steel buckle. Brushed on top, polished on the sides and with an engraved end for Nautilus. One thing I want to point out about the buckle is that it's pretty sharp on the bottom. That's something Horizon should address before production. Let's put it on my 7-inch wrist and see how the Nautilus wears. Well, it's pretty comfortable. Although a bit top-heavy and a bit tall, that's understandable considering the fact that it's a 300 meters diver that comes on a lightweight rubber strap. Other than that, I think it's quite a stunner. It is very unique and is definitely a conversation starter. Legibility is not the best to be honest. The hands don't have much meat on them, especially that minute hand, and they do tend to disappear into everything that is going on on the dial. It doesn't mean that you can't read the time, just that it might take you a second or two to orientate before you do. I would personally love to see the Nautilus come on additional strap options, and maybe even a bracelet. I think it would look superb on a bits of rice bracelet. Maybe that's something Horizon could consider as a stretch goal for the campaign. Let's do the pros and cons. This is not a con per se, but so far we've counted 17 unique features on the Nautilus. That definitely points at a crazy level of attention to details, but it also raises the following question. When does a lot become too much? There is so much going on here on a single watch that it might get a bit hard to focus. I think that the creator of the Nautilus had so many ideas, so many good ideas, cool and innovative, and his enthusiasm really shows on every detail on this watch. The result is still a beautiful watch in my opinion, though it might be too busy for some, for me it seems to work. Other than that, there are a couple of things I would personally like to see done different. The first one is the tips of the hour and minute hands that I've already mentioned. And one last thing, I would love to see this watch reduced in size a little bit. It is a bit bulky and tall, and I personally wouldn't mind going down to 200 meters of water resistance instead of 300, just for the sake of a smaller, slimmer case. Let's move over to the pros. I do like this watch a lot and feel like Horizon did some pretty amazing things with it. I really like the multi-layered dial with the different textures and the gorgeous dark salmon color. The indices are beautiful and unique. The integration of the date complication into the 4 o'clock marker is absolutely brilliant. The minute track is very nice. The case is very nicely finished, even for a prototype watch. I love the design on the case back. It's probably one of the best I've seen yet. I love the connection to Jules Verne's novel. I love the Art Deco styling and the attention to details. This watch is quite literally unique in every aspect. And besides that, it is a functional tool watch with 300 meters of water resistance, a sapphire crystal, a stainless steel case with a screw down crown and case back, and all of that with a price tag of under 400 bucks during the Kickstarter campaign. 
Let me know what you guys think of this first endeavor coming from Horizon Watches by dropping a comment below. If you are interested in the Nautilus and want to follow up with the brand and the watch, I will leave a link to their website in the description of this video, as well as a link to the Kickstarter campaign once I have it. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my affordable watch collection and hit the notification bell for more affordable watches related content. You can also follow me on Instagram and get to know me and my collection a little bit better, get all the news about the channel and connect with me on a more personal level. If you've enjoyed this video, you might enjoy one of these two as well. I want to thank Fred, the founder of Horizon, for letting me spend some time with his watch and to thank all of you guys very much for watching and I will see you next time.